are these people? I can think of at least one person I'd like to tie to a chair and and perform this next piece for. Um, uh, but he probably wouldn't know where he was. Um, <laughs> if you want to bring up a perennial perennial edition, um, this is this is uh, this is for Tara. This is read between the lines. Oh, oh boy! Okay. And man, talk about talk about footage. I wish I had. I performed this at the CPI event in Chicago that I'd I'd been at last year, and uh, the people took video. But as you know, everything with with CPI kind of went tits up after that, and uh, that video never materialized. I can't I can't find anyone that has any footage other than Shepherd of Hopes, which I'm glad I have one thing from it. But reading that for a crowd period was overwhelming. Reading it with Tara sitting right there was like. I, I really had to, like, I wanted to be present, but I also had to kind of do like what Maynard had to do in the early tool years. We're just yeah. deer in the headlights and just tune out for a minute. Cause mm -hmm. if I, if I focused too much on, on her, I would have just fallen apart, you know? Yeah. If you looked As at her, you broke I, it down. Like, yeah. I, I did a quiet professional sob. It was, it was <laughs> a very restrained, you know, uh, worldly <laughs> man of the world stop <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll have to check in but with no, caleb I, and see if he has has a copy of that anywhere he knows anyone that has yeah that. oh man that would i would i would kill to have that um powerless was not great that day because the guitar was so out of tune and i didn't have a whole lot of time so i just kind of did it and i was trying to tune it as i played like i'd play a couple chords and go jesus and try to like reach over and adjust it while i was going but the spoken word was was spot on so actually um, i'm not sure if he would be able if that's is that still his thing or didn't he resign from it that is, and... i think it is but i don't know if it's any of the same people you know that we're doing like videography and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of those people right. would would still be, um, but worth worth finding out. Um, yeah, we'll look into it for sure. I remember when I did Shepherd of Hopes, though. I told people, you know, this is about the prospect of Bernie running again, and I said, "If you fool me once," and I heard some lady in the crowd go, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> it was so perfect like already that line to hear a response from someone in the crowd like they know what's coming you know they know what they're in for like i made me so excited to read it so well gamer he's been smoking this whole show and and i've been hitting on the pen so if you're smoking right now you can be smoking a joint with or bung rip with me and jesse and we all hit it together so smoke oh, if you got him everyone yep. all right let me go into presenter mode Nice. That looks great. This is Reed. I was going to spark up this point tonight too, but I, I'm going to sound like Wolfman Jack if I do that. <laughs> and this is over at yeah, Jesse. Jet you, have cats. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can listen to this yourself at jessejet.bandcamp.com. <laughs> Throw them a couple of bucks if you can, but all the music and spoken word is available to listen to for free. Um, and it's amazing. So definitely do that. Okay. Now me, I'm going to hear the music in the background while I hear right. it, you know, like to, in, in my head as I listen to you say This say is it. one of the few, few pieces that I just cannot, my brain can't do that guitar run and say it. <laughs> it's just not possible. Yeah. That said, so I feel like this, this guitar in the um, album version of this uh, is me really wearing my, uh, my love for Coheed and Cambria on my sleeve. Mm. So it's, a, it's a totally Coheed kind of a, a feel on it. Um, okay. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, this was obviously I'd written a couple pieces that, that talked about Tara and, um, and her coming forward. Uh, and that's what kind of started us. Um, talking on Twitter and it wasn't until a good bit later that I was writing this piece and I uh I messaged her and I was like hey I said I'm, I'm writing a, a piece about you right now and then once it's finished I'd like to um I'd like to just run it by you before I I publish it obviously 
and I sent it to her and she was like, don't, don't change a thing, you know? And before I did, it just really struck me like what a, a unique position I'd found myself in already in, in the first, that was, you know, year and a half of, of making, of doing political music and being, being involved here. Um, that I was able to like reach out to her personally and get her approval on, on something. Um, just, uh, I really have in the, in these last three years since I put out the virus, I have made some of the most meaningful friendships and connections that I, I'll ever have. Uh, and I really like you and Tara and Greg and Reef and I mean, this, Charlie, um, there's just so, so many, um, more than I can, I can list, but I, you guys just mean the world to me. And, uh, so Tara, um, this, this is for you. This is read between the lines. Legend says that Hercules swept Cerberus right off his feet and effortlessly set him down as softly as a songbird. Atlas kept the world upon his back, and every day he wondered whether he could stand it any longer. And Tara Reed came out to say the man they tried to label the Messiah of morality was really just another rapist. And I don't intend to hesitate when asked who was the stronger. Tara, like Assange, knew that carrying the truth would be the hardest labor. Tara knew that her assailant wasn't going to make us any safer. Knew he's just the type of man to hand a decent foreign leader U.S. printed walking papers. And knew he'd be relentless and aggressive in the war he'd wage upon her very character. That his attempts to weaken and degrade and embarrass her would be her only compensation. But I strongly doubt that anyone could ever have foreseen the stream of hate that came from quote-unquote progressives and the self-styled titans of survivor advocation. So if you really think there's something to be gained out of sharing that pain with the world, then you're sorely mistaken. The Biden team just drug their feet addressing Tara's allegations until they had a decent list of smears and then they aired about on every station. And it turns out no one wants to hear the truth of who they praised as being worthy of such bloated liberal celebration. No one wants to really know the person they've so valiantly defended, even when it meant they had to gloat and shit all over someone braver than they'd be if given the occasion. Now cue the faceless comment squad invasion. Cue the people crawling out the woodwork to come analyze the way you wore your hair and what you wear. Like your appearance waves your rights, or that somehow you're the reason for your situation. Somehow they have decided you should bear responsibility for what such monstrous men insist on doing. Somehow they're deluded by the empty, hypocritical, and useless fucking platitudes that bastard keeps on spewing. And I think it's very telling that the best of your excuses when you try to come and justify our president's abuses is a hearty butt Trump. In which case, I'll remind you that you never saw the news attempt to sell you Donald Trump like he was morally upstanding or a decent human. But when Joe says something bigoted or ogles someone's little kid, CNN says, isn't this refreshing? Biden's like a mix of JFK and FDR with all the finer parts of Harry Truman. <laughs> and Christ, I know they don't think we're the brightest, but at least pretend we've got a couple lumens. Ask yourself if you have ever questioned what they fed you, or do you just shut your eyes and then consume it? Now ask yourself if you ate every one of Biden's lies under the guise of harm reduction and the promise of a slight improvement. And now imagine long ago that Biden chose to show you who he really was by traumatizing you for his amusement. Now imagine that you watched him touch a Bible with those filthy hands, and then assume the power of the highest seed in all the land, knowing your attacker wields a global coalition born of three-letter agencies who will make a life's mission out of trying to discredit you through lies, damned lies, and collusion. Big tech is never gonna separate from our surveillance state. Fuck's sakes, they're just a breath away from total fusion. So there will come a time where even if you see the light, your voice will never reach the sky through all the bots and all the noise pollution. So trust us when we tell you that the masking of abuses is perhaps this country's oldest institution. 
And I know nothing nobler than facing it in honor of the truth when you know damn well that those in power have been neutralizing truth since there was wet ink on the Constitution. So know that Tara's truth is something crucial to the movement. And if you see yourself a partner to the revolution, help this country see through all the baseless propaganda, through the crux of Joe's illusions, and recognize that Tara Reid gave everything she had so she could tell us what the truth is. Recognize the decent thing to do when someone bears their soul and shows their bruises. It's not to ask for context or to offer up your own solutions. Your job is just to listen with an honest mind and put yourself on Tara's side a moment so you understand the path she chooses. That there is no instant fame worth the dragging of your name. And if that's what you think, then you've a lot to learn about the kind of facts the mob can handle and the kind that it refuses. You've a lot to learn about the news and all its many uses. I guess you've yet to learn the truth the news will serve is fruit from which they've squeezed out all the juices and we all eat the husks and just pretend it's full of nutrients and isn't really useless. But the jaws of our ability to yield accountability are absolutely toothless. So don't you kid yourself that any lips are being loosened. They won't ever tell us where the bodies are or show us where the proof is. It's on you to recognize the lechery our president so regularly oozes. It's on you to muster up some honesty and ask yourself how Biden won your trust, but it's America that loses. Open up your eyes and learn to recognize the bruises. Open up your eyes and learn to recognize the bruises. And that's read between the lines. Oh, you son of a bitch. No, the Tara's. Don't you start, because I'm going to start. You, you killed <laughs> you me. So no, the Tara's truth is something crucial to the movement, and that was it. I'm gone. That's it. You <laughs> killed me. You killed me. You son of a bitch. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, okay.